My brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to talk to you about something. I was watching a video not too long ago on this young man. Well, he's kind of, he's not exactly young, but he's not old either. So I would say he's probably middle aged and he was talking about a few things, some experiences that he had. And one of the things that he said, it does not take much to go to hell. And I really stood out to me like, wow, you know, he's telling the truth. There's a lot of people that believe that because they're doing good things and, you know, God wouldn't send me to hell for this. But the truth of the matter is Jesus spoke very clearly that if there's anything in you that causes you to sin against him, he gave us a very drastic example that if our right eye causes you, if your right eye causes you to sin, to pluck it out and cast it away from you. If your right hand causes you to sin, to cut it off and throw it away from you. And he continues by saying, because it's better that one member of your body to perish than for your whole body to perish in hell. You know, Jesus spoke about hell, the hell that people want to say does not exist. Jesus spoke about hell where he says in Matthew 7, 20 through 22, that many are going to come to him and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out devils didn't we do didn't we prophesy didn't we do these things in your name these are believers my brothers and sisters and he's going to say depart from me uh i never knew you i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness so it is very clear that the lord is teaching us that even as believers who are prophesying and who's doing these great things in his name that you can end up losing yourself into eternal damnation because of lawlessness and practicing sin it does not take a lot to go in to go to hell my brothers and sisters a lot of times people are looking at those who do really big things oh murderers will go to hell oh uh people who rape will go to hell uh this person that keeps doing this this really bad guy that does a more bad than 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 good was going to go to hell but me th who goes to church and do these good things no i'm not gonna go but there is no spot or wrinkle in the lord and so that's why a lot of people think that in their good, doing good deeds and things of that nature that, yeah, I'm going to go to heaven. But then you have unforgiveness in your heart. And that's one of the things that the Lord has shared with me, that that's going to be one of the ways so many people are going to miss heaven because they're going to be doing all these great things. You'll find that they have done all these wonderful things. They've never cursed in their life. They've never... Um, done any sexual immoral thing in their life because there are people who they have not done anything like that but you will find that they have a deep hatred for a person they had a deep hatred for a specific race and what's going to happen is they'll miss heaven for that they have unforgiveness they will there's going to be people that's going to miss heaven for example the things that's happening with racism there's other there's people of different races who they don't do anything to help those who are being oppressed and they're in power to do it. They're people who God has blessed individuals to be in power, to have a voice, to be able to help people, not just black people, but people in general, the American Indians, all this stuff is going on, just and people in other countries who are being oppressed and they won't do anything because eh, I don't want to get involved in that. So they don't say anything. And these people are dying. Can you save the whole nation? No. But what did God, what did God put in your hand and give the ability to do that you have been disobeying him and people are dying and their blood is being spilled because you never organized that group. You never organized that, that, that thing that could have been helpful. How many of you think you can go to hell for that? People don't believe that. There are people who are racist in their hearts they don't like certain groups of people i, I don't really like I, I don't hate them but i go to church with them but i don't want them around me there are many of you who sit there and you get happy when someone gets hurt you get happy when and think in your heart how someone deserves something to happen to them you're judging that person this is what they deserve and sometimes you do little things to set people up to get heard and set people up that they get caught. You do things to expose people's secrets. You'll go to hell for those things. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't take much, my brothers and sisters. And that's why it's so important that we are we have a close relationship with the Lord so that he can always show us the things that's inside of us and what's there so that we can be changed, that we can be changed and made in his image and likeness. Nobody is perfect. No one knows everything, but the Lord has given us the comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit that can help us, my brothers and sisters, truly help us to walk this walk. And when God shows you something, you see, a lot of times you don't know what's in you, but you will be presented in a, you will be presented a situation that you can fix it. 
God will show you something. The Lord will bring something to your remembrance. You will be in a situation where you can say something to correct it, where you can correct something, where you can stop something, where you could have helped someone and your choice right there. God will bring that back to your remembrance when you stand before him. You see all the people that's getting killed not too long ago. There's a, a black man that got shot while he was jogging and people are going, oh, it was justified and all these different things. People have their own opinion and there's people who they don't say anything, but in their hearts there, they believe it. You know, black people are always doing this or, you know, white people are always doing this. On the flip side, there are people that's looking at it. White people are always hurting black people. So they hate the white people and they have all this hatred towards them and all of that. Okay. And it's a natural thing for as a person of color or of any race, when you see that happening, it brings fear, it brings anger. But even with that, we still need to bring those things to the Lord. Because would you believe it if you harbor that feeling as far as what just happened to this young man and you begin to hate them and you don't allow the Lord to help you rein that in, you're going to stand before the Lord for hating those two guys that killed that young man. Because you allow you, you have to understand why is it like that? That makes no sense because it's all spirit. The word of God says in Ephesians 6 that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness in heavenly places. The rules of the darkness in high places and wickedness in heavenly. The word of the Lord is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, the joints and the marrow and the thoughts and sense of the heart. I don't know why I just said that. I just went off. But Ephesians 6 says that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. I don't know why I went off on that other scripture. So everything that we see in this world, every situation down to things that's happening on the higher echelons, you know, as far as our country and our governments and the nations and the world to the decisions that you make right there in your own home by yourself. Everything is, is propelled by the spirit. So the reason why it's a huge deal is because every situation that comes to you, every situation, every emotion, everything that you feel that is a spiritual test or a situation and how you handle it is going to, if you could imagine, just put a little mark on you or there's something in you. God wants to get it out. He wants to get hatred out of you. So he'll have a situation where somebody who is of a race that maybe you don't like comes and needs help from you and you have the opportunity to do the right thing and you don't. Or they come to your church and you really wish they don't come back to your church. Oh, what they doing up in here? I hope they don't bring their friends. You know, things of that nature. Oh, there goes the neighborhood when someone moves in. Things like that, my brothers and sisters, are the small things. that That's the little things. A little leaven spoils a whole lump. So when you entertain hateful thoughts, when you entertain lustful thoughts, when you sit there and do things secretly, if you are an implosive person where it means that you do not want to, you're a person that your emotions and, and your thoughts are not very obvious. So you can sit there and really be having the most hateful thoughts and wishing the most hateful things on a person and they don't know you are the hardest and the most likely to end up going to eternal damnation. And I say that not lightly, but because a lot of times when an individual like that, it does not surrender to the Lord. They're very hard to detect. They're very hard to catch, so to speak. So they can really just, you be sitting there thinking you're crazy because they know how to hide. They know how to cocoon themselves in innocence and be doing a lot of wickedness. So truly this individual, a lot of their convictions are going to come from their conscience, the Lord speaking to them, and they would willfully just disobey the Lord, keep doing what they're doing because humans can't really catch them because they're so good at being elusive. And so that is why that person can easily die in their sin and go to hell because they have been disobeying God <laughs> and they've been just hard to find, hard to, to prove, okay? I know that I'm saying a lot of things, but my brothers and sisters, we don't necessarily want to live a life of, I don't want to go to hell, so let me not do this. You don't want to be serving God out of fear and I don't want to go to hell. But what I'm trying to tell you is that we serve a holy God. We serve a righteous God. There is no 
darkness in him. And so he sent the Holy Spirit. He sent Jesus here to die and become the ultimate sacrifice to help us who are lawless by nature, who are just ray ray and raggedy by nature. We a bunch of ragamuffins. We can just do stuff by nature. I don't care how classy and wherever you came from, blue blood, whatever blood, we in our heart dwells no good thing. So he sent the Lord to come and walk this walk to to show that it's possible. Set the pay, set set the standard and paved the way for us to follow. Then he left the Holy Spirit with us to help us in those things that's impossible so that we can walk and he can continue to take the dark things away from us and purify us and make us whole because it's possible to be perfect. You just have to be willing to obey. But the word of the Lord, my brothers and sisters, is it's not hard. It doesn't take much to go to hell. It really does not take much. You know, that, that man that went to hell, well, he, he just will pass this man. He never will give the man any food. But maybe he did some other great things in his life. People do that all the time. You pass a homeless person on the corner. You won't give him anything. And when you give him something, you give him something that you know, you give him a dollar. You know, sometimes that's all you have. But you don't want to give him anything. You don't want to give him more because, oh, they may use this money for drugs and alcohol. and I, But you don't know that. This person may really use that. If they choose to use it for drug and alcohol, then that's them. But you know that you gave you gave them something that realistically that they can go buy themselves a meal. There's a lot of things people do. And God has shown me a lot of the things that can take you to hell. It's going to be passive aggressive behavior. Unforgiveness is going to be the main thing that a lot of people is going to go to hell for. A lot of things also is people that see others that are being hurt and oppressed and you turn your eye away from it. You close your eyes to injustices. You close your eyes. You knew that people were plotting and planning to do something wrong. It may not be on a big level like something political, but things at your job, you know that they're getting ready to set someone up and you kept quiet about it and you watch that person get fired and blamed for something they didn't do. You know that they're getting ready to try to do something to someone within the ministry. You just stand there and let it happen. You turn your eyes from what is wrong. Those are the things God is going to hold you accountable for. And so the Lord is called, why does this, this why the Lord has a prayer that says, our father who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day because we are not supposed to be living for self, but it's a unified thing, my brothers and sisters, that we're looking out for brothers and sisters in Christ. When you see injustices being done to someone that you speak out, if you are in a position of power to change some things for others that's being oppressed, then you do that because God did not make you a, po a politician or an attorney. He did not allow you to be in this place of power to have the ear of a governor so that you can keep quiet because, well, I don't want to stir the pot. You know, you can be in places just as Esther was because you've been set there for just for such a time as this to save your nation Esther could have been easily killed because she herself was a Jew but she and she followed and she trusted the Lord and she spoke out for her people and there's a lot of people that's not going to do that because th that's not my people that's not my problem and these are the little things, my brothers and sisters. These are the, the minor infractions, the thoughts that we have in our head. Someone cut, cuts us off in traffic and you wish that they get into a car accident up the street. These are the little things that you do and you don't even think about it. And you go home and you're praising the Lord and you open up your Bible and you're doing praise and worship and you got a bunch of mess in your heart. How can you possibly know what you're doing is right or wrong? It boils back down to having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, obeying him, obeying the Holy Spirit, coming before him. And he will begin to show you these things and help you to be able to walk this narrow path and to ensure that when you get before the Lord, when the sky open up and we see our Heavenly Father coming back for us, or when you die and you stand before him, you want to hear, well done, thou good, thy good and faithful servant. All right, guys, I know this video was long, but I had to get it out there to you all. All right, peace out.